Hello everyone, welcome back. Now, I love the vampire ideology from the Blade franchise. It's incredibly detailed, with lots of information with no stone overturned. In today's video, I'm going to take you all through the entire history of the vampire species and how they operate within the Blade universe. Within the modern, present-day universe of Blade, vampirism is known as a biological condition caused by a powerful virus, on the contrary to its origin of supernatural affliction as told in traditional vampiric folklore. However, it's been proven vampires have retained some aspects of mysticism for evolutionary change, specifically ones who have received the virus through bite and not birth. One ritual in particular was to awaken the vampire blood god La Magra using 12 pure blood vampires. The origin of these rituals are left ambiguous. This indicates the vampiric virus possessing anonymous supernatural elements. Vampires are looked upon as biological species as opposed to mythical or supernatural. Their scientific classification is a branch of Homo sapiens known as Homines nocturna. As such, they are not affected by religious symbols such as crucifixes and holy water. Other attributes traditionally associated with vampires such as turning into mist or bats are also unknown. Mostly forgotten legends in ancient vampire texts say that they descended from Drake, also known as Dracula, an ancient Sumerian immortal who was worshipped as a god, by which being the original source of the virus. Almost all present-day vampires, however, have forgotten the origins of their species. Vampires are intricately involved in virtually every aspect of modern human civilization, and most have become adept at manipulating the capitalistic nature of the population within America to cover up and finance their illegal and unethical activities. Rather than feral monsters, vampires maintain a secret, mafia-like power cabal in the bounds of society. Vampirism is a virus most often transferred via the saliva of a vampire into the victim's bloodstream through a bite. The incubation period is usually 72 hours after infection, by which time the virus will mutate the victim into a vampire by creating new parasitic organs. During this incubation period, the infected will start feeling an aversion to sunlight and intense thirst no matter how much they drink. Even a person who was technically killed shortly after becoming infective will still revive as a vampire if they are not properly drained of blood. So long as their brain and heart are intact, their body's tissues won't actually die, but will be regenerated by the virus. They are medically dead in the technical sense that their heart stops for several hours, but it is impossible to infect and revive someone who was already dead. Infected humans who die and revive in this manner have a shorter incubation period, only a few hours as opposed to three days. Marcus van Schijver reveals that transformation from bites is not a highly reliable means of transmitting the vampire virus and is considered uncivilized and savage. He turns Krista Starr simply by injecting her with his blood via a hypodermic syringe and dropping her from a two-story building onto a car killing her. She rises as a vampire over one hour later. When an infected person is killed, in the process of the virus reviving them, they experience an after-death experience or ADE in which they have visions both of their own dreams and memories as their cognitive functions reconstruct and of when the vampire that infected them was turned. The latter is obtained via the infector's genetic memories transferred to the infected person. The vampirism virus radically alters the host's physiology and metabolism, somewhat like a cancer, but cancer with a purpose, a structure, instead of chaos, creating entirely new parasitic organs inside the body. Outwardly, vampires look like regular humans and can visibly blend into society without being noticed by people. Vampires do not grow fangs to aid in feeding, but they are attractable. Vampires have a much lower average body temperature than humans, around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, compared to the average human of 98.6 degrees, thus making it possible to spot vampires in a crowd using an infrared camera. 
A vampire cannot produce sufficient amounts of hemoglobin as the virus itself burns away at whatever energy may be produced. For this reason, it is quintessential for vampires to feed on human blood. Ordinary food is edible to vampires, but it is unclear if it has nutritional value to them or if it's only done for pleasure as they can live entirely on blood alone. This need for blood is known as the thirst and is considered to be a vampiric weakness as well as the primal urge that drives all vampires. This permeates every aspect of their existence within our society and often causes discourse within the vampire community itself due to an unbalanced ratio of vampires to humans. Otherwise, vampires have several strengths but they also have several weaknesses too. So in this part of the video, I'm going to explain both the strengths, then I'll explain the weaknesses. So vampires are immortal creatures whose bodies cease to physically age beyond a certain point. Pure blood vampires will age into adulthood, while turned vampires maintain their physical form they had when they were still human. Theoretically, a vampire can live forever providing that it is not destroyed. Vampires possess inhuman strength, equivalent to that of 10 strong men, allowing standard vampires to lift between 1,000 to 4,000 pounds. They can leap across large distances and deliver powerful blows sufficient to throw an adult male human across a room with enough force to crack solid surfaces such as concrete. All vampires have the advantage of overwhelmingly raw physical strength against any human opponent. Although vampires who do not have the discipline or experience to hone their super strength, typically young vampires with an impatient fighting style, very often fall to well-trained human vampire hunters. This may also apply to older vampires who are simply too arrogant and too confident in their abilities to consider humans a threat. Thus, only the eldest, wisest and most patient of vampires who combine the full force of their inhuman physical power with centuries of experience and discipline are able to prove virtually unstoppable. Even a turned blood may defeat a pure blood under such circumstances. Vampires move with great agility speed and flexibility. They are also able to scale sheer surfaces including walls and ceilings. Krista Starr, a newborn vampire, was able to jump from her window onto the roof of another building in a single bound. Deacon Frost was able to easily dodge bullets fired by Blade, though this is at the extreme end of a very skilled vampire as most vampires are not usually able to dodge Blade's gunfire. Vampires possess adapted musculature around the canine teeth that can extend these to become fangs. They can also extend their fingernails to claw-like proportions. A vampire's senses are sharper than those of a human. They can see into the ultraviolet spectrum and possess perfect visual clarity in total darkness. One way they make use of this is to leave hidden glyphs in the ultraviolet ink. Their sense of smell allows them to catch the scent of blood. A vampire's wound tends only to slow the vampire down temporarily healing quick, in some cases regenerating entire body parts. This process is accelerated by the amount of hemoglobin absorbed from blood. Vampires are immune to terrestrial illnesses and diseases and can perfectly heal any wound. Thus, purebloods who are born as vampires have no scars. Because vampires have an inability to sustain enough hemoglobin, they develop a form of anemia. This causes them to have a craving for blood, similar to food craving and substance dependence. If a vampire does not feed on blood for a long period of time, it will develop withdrawal symptoms and become gradually weaker and eventually die. Being exposed to sunlight will severely burn and ultimately kill a vampire. This is not a supernatural relationship with the sun, as any UV light source will harm a vampire due to their inability to produce defenses in the skin. Blade uses a portable UV flashlight unit in the first film and by the second film is using smaller gun-mounted UV lights. Some vampires have discovered that by applying heavy amounts of sunblock, mascara or other materials to their exposed skin, they can functionally move around in daylight for a limited length of time without significant harm. Others have worn full body covering suits, like motorcycle helmets, to move around during the day. Those that produce a natural defense in the body from UV light, allowing them to move around in daylight are called daywalkers, but they are a one in a million rarity. 
Vampires are fatally allergic to silver and garlic, which causes them to go into anaphylactic shock and possibly death. For this reason, vampire hunters like Blade rely on weapons made of silver, such as hollow point silver bullets filled with garlic. Non-lethal wounds from silver weapons are more difficult for vampires to heal. Whistler also developed an aerosol mace composed of silver nitrate mixed with garlic, which was quite effective. The EDTA blood thinner used in hospitals for clearing out blood clots in arteries reacts incredibly violent with vampire blood. Injecting a vampire with a syringe filled with EDTA will cause them to literally explode into a cloud of blood in a matter of seconds. Vampires also possess their own language, which many vampires speak. It is unclear, however, if it is learned culturally or passed down through genetic memory. This language also has its own writing system, referred to as vampire glyphs, which are often used in graffiti to mark vampire hideouts. Vampire society on the local or regional level is broken up into over a dozen major clans. The houses form a united front in the vampire nation, the international governing hierarchy of the entire vampire race. Over the generations, the vampires have developed an international power cabal. They control about half of the global financial institutions and own the police, bribing off human officials throughout the world to ignore and or aid in their activities. The vampire nation's leadership has decided that a full-scale war with humans is undesirable, so they maintain a secret truce with human governments. Human politicians will ignore the vampires and in return, the vampires will keep their numbers relatively low, not turning too many humans into new vampires basically. Most of the vampire nation believes maintaining the truce is in their best interest. Occasionally renegade vampires pop up who disregard the vampire nation's rule. One such renegade was Deacon Frost, who felt that vampires should rule humans directly. Frost's actions were considered dangerous by the House of Erebus, with one leader warning him that the human governments would make things very difficult for them if their numbers increased too much. Vampires are divided into two socio-biological categories, pure blood and term blood. Pure bloods are born as vampires, the offspring of two people who are already vampires. This happens very rarely. Term blood vampires have had a human existence before, becoming a vampire and are looked at with disdain by most of the purebloods due to their lack of vampiric purity, seeing them as a lesser breed or false vampires. While the term bloods don't age, the purebloods age very slowly. A pureblood vampire that looks like an elderly adult is truly ancient. While vampires do have a massively extended lifespan, they are not truly immortal, though they can live for so many thousands of years that the eldest among them may have been around since the dawn of human civilization. While all vampires are capable of having offspring, both through the reproduction and turning, the birth rate between mating vampires is so low that it is practically non-existent. Even after many centuries, they may have had only one or two children. It is possible to use retroviral gene therapy modified from the kind used to treat sickle cell anemia to cure someone who has been infected with the vampirism virus. While dangerous if done long after incubation, it is even possible to change a turn blood vampire back into a human. The retrovirus won't work on pure bloods, however, because they were born with the viral genes integrated into their DNA and replicating naturally in contrast to an infected vampire in which foreign DNA was added to their pre-existing DNA. Vampires also have servants called familiars. Now familiars are humans who are willing to serve them. Familiars serve vampires in exchange for wealth, protection and the possibility of one day being rewarded for their service by being turned into a vampire themselves. Familiars usually have tattoos of vampire glyphs located somewhere on their body, like their back, their neck, or the base of their wrist, which is much like a cattle brand. This glyph warns other vampires that if they attempt to feed from or otherwise harm this human, they will have to answer to the vampire the human serves. Familiars can function in daylight, of course, and may occupy crucial positions in human society, which aid the vampire's infiltration. Then we have daywalkers. 
Now, daywalkers are a type of vampire or half vampire human hybrid who can walk in the daylight without harm. Blade is a daywalker due to his mother being bitten and turned while she was pregnant with him. Drake is also another daywalker. As the first vampire, he is stronger than most of his descendants, and daywalkers still have the vampiric need for blood. Blade starves this off using injections of a special serum, but over time, his body builds up a tolerance to it, and he has to develop a new one. Daywalkers are exceedingly rare. Blade and Drake were the only two of their kind before Drake's death, leaving Blade to be the only daywalker on Earth. Last up, we have the Revenant. On extremely rare occasions, something goes horribly wrong in the normal transition process from infected human to vampire. The result is a Revenant, a badly malformed zombie-like creature. The reason for this is not understood and it is predictable, though such mistakes occur so infrequently that vampires do not usually consider it when they try to turn a human. Pallid and cadaverous, a Revenant is covered in patches of dying flesh that are shedding and slowing off. Revenants have an insatiable desire to eat anything from animals, rodents and corpses to humans and even vampires themselves. Revenants are still conscious and capable of complex speech, but their minds are clearly deranged. Vampires usually destroy revenants when they occur. And there you have it guys, that is Vampires from Blade Explained. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and make sure to check out my future videos because they just might be a little bit better than this one.